everyone, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Nina. I help people to declutter their minds and their homes using practical applications of psychology. And today we're going to be talking all about how clutter can affect our relationships. I received an extremely heartfelt letter from a subscriber saying that clutter was really starting to affect their marriage and if I could please talk about that and I said absolutely because I think this is an aspect of clutter that we don't often address and it's also a very touchy subject on both sides because on one hand we would hate to think that anything that we have done or that we are doing could be negatively impacting someone else. But also on the flip side, we often feel misunderstood and we don't address that. We can feel that no one really understands or gets our struggle with clutter and why we can't just simply clean it up as easily as they might suggest we could. And as someone who used to greatly struggle with this, I know firsthand that we can have feelings of being ashamed or embarrassed or, again, isolated or misunderstood because we don't think that anyone really understands any of this or what we are going through which can also lead to a lot of negative consequences. So today I wanted to talk about the different ways that clutter may be affecting our relationships and what we can do about it. But before I dive into this list, I wanna make sure that we are watching this video through a lens of self-love, self-understanding, and self-compassion. Some of these things can be hard to hear, but please know that there are always solutions and no situation is without hope. Also, just because we have a cluttered lifestyle, it does not mean that we are a bad person. It just means that we happen to struggle in this one area. So simply listen to the video coming from a place of trying to understand what the perspective of another person might be, as opposed to a place of feeling badly about ourselves. Clutter is something that can absolutely be overcome no matter how hopeless we feel. It is something that I am living proof of and also something that I have an entire playlist dedicated to. So I will link that down in the description box below just in case you feel that you need further resources in this area. And we will also be talking about some solutions at the end of this video. So that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the five different ways that clutter may be affecting our relationships. The first thing is that clutter can lead to arguments. People that do not struggle with this issue oftentimes simply cannot understand why we have so much difficulty throwing things away or giving things away or cleaning things up. And so naturally they get frustrated. They may try to be understanding, but it can often still lead to arguments. So when this happens in a relationship, we end up with one person feeling insulted or anxious and feeling very protective of their things and feeling that no one again really understands them. And then on the other side, we have a person who feels helpless and irritated because they feel that this is really a problem, but they can't really fix it without that other person's help. And in some cases, in an effort not to hurt that other person's feelings, it may be something that never gets discussed. We kind of avoid it. It becomes the elephant in the room. And just like anything else in our life that we are avoiding, we can't really solve the problem or move forward because we're not actually addressing the issue. And that tends to cause a lot of resentment. Clutter can also make people feel disrespected. So for example, if our partner or our roommate tells us that they hate seeing dirty dishes in the sink, or they hate all the drawers being so overstuffed that they no longer close, or they hate seeing all these boxes stacked up against the wall, yet we do nothing about it, they can feel disrespected. They can feel that what they are saying to us is not important, even though that may not be the case at all. When someone mentions something to us, however, especially something specific, it does mean it is important to them. And so it's not something that we should ignore, even when we cannot understand their need for organization or their need for decluttering. We may even feel that we don't know how to fix the problem or that we're not capable of fixing the problem. And we may have hurt feelings ourselves, but we still do need to address it. While it's human nature to be thinking about our own feelings, we have to know that the cluttered environment may be causing them stress and anxiety or embarrassment. And it's important that we do understand that everybody deserves to be validated and listened to, and everybody's feelings are important here. 
So when we're failing to address the situation or at least discuss the situation, it can make other people feel that our stuff is more important than they are, which is of course not true. But these feelings of disrespect that they may experience can cause a lot of harm to our relationships. The second problem is that clutter can lead to financial issues. When we are always losing things or we can't find anything because they are buried underneath mountains of stuff, it can be extremely frustrating and very expensive because we end up buying things a second time. We have these duplication costs because we have to replace these items that usually turn up a month or two later after we've already spent the money. When we are not organizing our things, all kinds of things can happen. For example, they can expire. When we're talking about food items, we can have all kinds of costs because food is simply expiring before we use it. We don't even know that we have it a lot of times. Or we can have expired gift cards because we never could find it in time. Or we're going to the place, but we simply don't know where it is, so we end up spending the money anyway or we can lose important pieces of paperwork like our social security card or marriage certificate. And when we need these things and we have to replace them, that can be also timely and costly as well. We can have late fees from losing bills or library books, or we can have very direct costs in our life from having to buy bins to put all this stuff in or storage units or even bigger houses that we fill up with more and more clutter. Financial issues can cause great emotional strain and can make people feel irritable and anxious and even angry sometimes. So if one person feels that clutter is causing money to be wasted, it can actually cause problems on both sides. So we have the one person who is feeling angry and frustrated, and then the other person who is feeling maybe guilty or defensive, or maybe doesn't feel that the clutter is that big of a deal. So again, it starts to cause a lot of problems. The third thing is that clutter affects our satisfaction with our home. In a perfect world, when we came home from a stressful day, we would be able to completely relax in this beautiful sanctuary. But if one of the people in the relationship feels that they cannot do that because their house is crowded and cluttered and messy, it can cause them to feel a lot of irritation and overwhelm instead of being able to relax. It can also lead to feelings of resentment and bitterness because if they feel that the house is not presentable, they may feel too embarrassed to have other people come to the home and that can start to affect their other relationship as well as our other relationships. And it can also affect our own satisfaction with our home. Just because we struggle with clutter doesn't mean that we wouldn't prefer to live in an environment that is more relaxing and clean. We just may feel that we don't know how to achieve this. This was absolutely the case for me. I wanted to live in a beautiful clutter-free home. I just didn't know how to make that happen. And I love to go to places like hotels because I loved these beautiful environments. I just didn't think it was possible for me to recreate that. But now I can assure you that it is absolutely possible to transform this area of our lives. Number four is that clutter makes it more difficult to freely enjoy our lives. When we live in a clean and organized space, it makes it much easier to manage our time and our resources. We are not constantly wasting time trying to find our keys or important paperwork. We simply know where everything is so we can get through tasks very easily. We also have more physical space that allows us to do more activities. So when our house is all cluttered, do we really want to spend the time cleaning up an area so that we can do something or are we more likely just going to sit on the couch? If we have to spend an hour or even two hours cleaning the kitchen so we're able to bake cookies, is that really going to happen? Probably not. Many times we can't even find the space to set up a board game, let alone do something fun and spontaneous like go on a camping trip because it would take us an entire week to dig through the garage and get everything that we need. So clutter ends up really costing us our freedom and our ability to be spontaneous and fun. And number five is that clutter can lead to isolation and avoidance. When we're feeling really great about ourselves, it makes it very easy for us to be in a relationship because we feel happy, we feel confident, and we show up as that best version of ourselves. 
But we know through research that clutter can make us feel hopeless and helpless and also can greatly affect our self-worth and our self-esteem. And when that is the case, that directly impacts us and how we behave in a relationship. When we're feeling sad or misunderstood, we may start to engage in activities that we think will make ourselves feel better or distance ourselves from these negative emotions. So we may find that we watch a lot of television or that we play a lot of video games or do a lot of online shopping or you know spend hours on social media because we think that these activities may make us feel better in the short term. But these avoidance or escapism activities can really pull us away from our loved ones. It can make us not have the time or the energy to be able to interact with them. And when this happens, we're not really giving them the time that is necessary to truly nurture our relationships. So it becomes this kind of vicious cycle. And sometimes it just comes down to the fact that we don't want to hear about it anymore. We're sick of talking about it. We're sick of other people bringing it up. So we want to create this little bubble for ourselves where we can escape and we don't have to deal with the issue because a lot of times, again, we just don't know how to fix it. But of course, if we make a habit out of this, it can cause serious harm to the relationship and certainly it does nothing to actually solve the problem. And a lot of times this is tricky because we don't always connect these dots. But the good news here is that once we are aware of these issues, once these potential problems come into the light, we can certainly fix them, we can work on them. So let's talk about how we can do exactly that. Firstly, and most importantly, we have to know that communication in any relationship with any issue is key. And certainly that is the key to solving this issue. So as uncomfortable as it may be, we have to be able to have an open and honest dialogue with that person. Both people need to feel that they are freely able to express themselves without judgment. And also as difficult as it may be, it is important to explain that we do struggle with this issue. This may be something that we haven't really admitted before, but certainly admitting that this is an issue for us is a very helpful step in coming up with solutions. So we wanna make sure that both parties have truly expressed themselves and really help the other person to understand their perspective. This is important before we move forward. And from there, we can simply solution find. So we need to start to figure out what would actually help this issue. Let's brainstorm, let's think of things that could immediately make it a little bit better. So maybe that's going to be coming up with a few clutter-free areas that we agree on, or starting some new habits together, or making some rules, or you know, if the other person is willing to help with the decluttering process, how would that work? Now, you may not want them to be part of that process, which is also fine. But if you feel that it would be helpful, I do have a video that specifically addresses this topic, having other people help you declutter, because this is something that can make us feel a little bit anxious or threatened or bring up a lot of negative emotions. So it's important that that other person goes into this process knowing what would actually be helpful or what would make the process a lot more difficult. So I will go ahead and link that down in the description box below as well as the entire playlist that is dedicated to clutter, psychology, and solutions. Also very specifically what needs to happen if we do want to transform our behavior in the area of clutter is habit building. And that's something that I have, again, another specific video about, but it's not going to happen overnight. And that's something that both parties need to understand that we are working towards this. It's not going to be a magic wand that comes in and, and magically fixes everything, but this is doable. So we have to start building habits and it is helpful Helpful if it's something that we can do together. Keep in mind also that if you feel that this is too overwhelming or you just don't believe in your ability to change, you can always enlist the help of a counselor or mental health professional who would be more than happy to help you with this journey, whether it be in helping with clutter or in relationship difficulties. So this is something to always keep in mind because sometimes we do need a little bit of assistance. 
I also want to take a quick moment to offer my own support and I truly wish you so much luck and love in this process. Believe me, it is possible to transform in this area if it's something that you really want to do. Again, I'm living proof of that, so do not give up hope. As always, I truly hope today's video was helpful and interesting. If it was, please like it, share it, and definitely become a subscriber if you are not one already. We absolutely want you to stay connected, and I hope the rest of your day is extraordinary.